Um, so I've come to Leicester from Birmingham, Birmingham University, where I spent the best part of 20 years as both a student and a member of staff. Um, I trained in medicine um, and during that time I also did an intercalated degree in neuroscience. Um, and that was really where I got interested in the basic science in a big way. Um, and also how it applied to clinical practice. Having graduated, I worked at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and Selly Oak Hospital, which has now been knocked down. And we've got a brand new hospital in Birmingham, of course. And I did that for two years in various specialties, mostly surgical specialties. Um, but after two years working as a junior doctor, um, for various reasons, I decided that what I really wanted to do was go into research and, and also focus more on teaching. So I contacted a supervisor and I was fortunate enough to get a very prestigious PhD studentship where I conducted research on spinal cord injury and regeneration in the central nervous system. And during that time, um, I experienced a lot of um, experimental techniques, not least including those where we were using injury models. Um, so, so I had to start applying anatomy in the real world there for the first time. Um, following the PhD, um, I then decided to pursue teaching more. And that's when I became an anatomy demonstrator at Birmingham, where I was teaching medical students, dental students, science students, um, all aspects of anatomy, from cell biology to histology to gross anatomy. And just developed a love for anatomy because I just found it made sense and it was really good fun to teach. Then I was fortunate enough to get a lectureship in the School of Biosciences as a lecturer in human biology, where I was really able to develop my teaching skills and use all of the things I've learned working as an anatomy demonstrator. And also to start learning, you know, what does it mean to be a, a proper academic? Um, so doing a lot of um, administrative roles and starting to also to develop their human biology course. And during that time I, I introduced a brand new module on human anatomy and physiology to the biology students which went down very well. Um, and that culminated in me getting the Outstanding Teaching Award in 2015 last year. Then um, I was very happy in that job uh, but opportunity arose here in Leicester and our family have got very strong connections with Leicester and also it was, it was a promotion and it was an excellent opportunity to, for me to develop as an academic. So I applied for this and, and was fortunate enough to get it. So I, I think that, that the, the dissecting room for me is one of my priorities to make sure that it runs well and to make sure the students are getting as much as possible out of the dissecting room. But I do think that there's certain other things that we can be doing as well. Um, for example, I'm, I'm a big fan of electronic resources in anatomy and I use the iPad a lot and have used the iPad to teach anatomy for quite some years. And so I was very pleased to see that once again at Leicester, iPads are used uh, and, and um, interactive anatomy atlases are used on the iPad here as well. So that's something I want to develop further and, and, and I'd like to start, you know, I mean I don't know exactly what people are doing in lectures at the moment, um, but start using that in not only in the dissecting room but in lectures as well. Um, and I know that we're very soon going to be receiving um, a, a, an almost unique anatomical specimen in the form of Mrs. Horace, which um, as, you, as you might know is a, a whole female cadaver which has been sectioned into one centimetre slices alongside CT and MRI scans as well. Um, and I think that's going to be um, a, a brilliant resource for us to have. So I'm really excited about trying out Mrs. Horace uh, to teach our students. Um, another thing which I would like to try to encourage medical students to think about, but which I'm aware that we don't have as much time in the curriculum as, uh, as other courses do, would be to get students realising that anatomy is a basic fundamental science and that anatomical structures actually make sense. And I think it's very difficult when you're learning anatomy, when you're using textbooks, 
to just think that it's a list learning exercise. Whereas the way I see anatomy is that there is there are overarching principles governing the structure and function of the body and if we can understand these principles it'll help us make more sense of the specific facts. So that's one thing, another thing I really like to the medical students to appreciate and I think that would help them to learn their anatomy better. I think we all know that there is a tremendous amount out there put on anatomy on the internet and there are a tremendous number of books and other resources as well and trying to put myself in the shoes of a student I think it must be very difficult to work out as a student which ones are good and which ones are not so good and my, my advice often to students is, um, whether it's about selecting a book or any other resource, is, is it's got to be something that suits you. I think you've got to interact with it, you've got to discover whether it works for you. For example, if we think of books, some people like more written descriptions, some people prefer, prefer more figures, some people don't like black and white figures, some people like colour figures. So I think that's one thing, you've got to find resources that suit you. But at the same time, you've got to apply a certain amount of critical thought to whether these resources are accurate and, and appropriate as well. Um, and I think that's where we need to start thinking about um, this idea of, of triangulation um, for learners, where a student needs to be using multiple different resources uh, in order to validate um, the knowledge that they're gaining. So, for example, if a student were to find a resource on the internet or an app, they're obviously going to need to then compare it with what, what their curriculum requires, and they're going to need to compare it with the so-called gold standards, the textbooks that we're recommending, for example. And that's not even to say that textbooks are perfect. Um, you can pick up any textbook and you will find errors, and it's just, just a part of the process of, 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 of communicating knowledge. There's always going to be errors. So I think you know, what, what students really need to do is compare multiple resources and talk to each other as well. Compare ideas, compare notes, talk to each other and, and, and only then are you going to be confident that what you're learning is truly accurate. I think that it's always a little bit scary as a medical student. The amount that you need to know is tremendous. and. I think that it's our jobs as academics not just to deliver knowledge to you but to help you to prioritise your learning. Um, I would say that I would, I'm ha always happy to talk to students if they're having difficulties, obviously in, under the constraints of my busy timetable and my other responsibilities. Um, but I think the main thing is, is to, is, 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 is to prioritise your learning, learn the important stuff first, take guidance from academics about what's important and not to get too bogged down in minutiae and tiny details which sometimes are very important but frequently can tend to distract from the essential knowledge that you need to gain in order to be practising doctors.